The state of California will halt sales of new gasoline-powered passenger cars and trucks by 2035. Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order on Wednesday that will cut greenhouse gas emissions by 35 percent. The order ends the sales of all new gasoline-powered passenger cars and trucks in California of nearly uh, 40 million people who lived here in the state. However, the governor says it would not ban people from owning gas-powered cars or selling them on the used car market. We will move forward to green and decarbonize our vehicle fleet here in the state of California. As a consequence, substantially reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as oxide nitrogen. You can still keep your internal combustion engine car. You can still have a market for used cars. You can still trade and transfer those cars. We're not taking anything away. We're providing an abundance of new choices and new technology. Governor Newsom also says the executive order will enhance and advance the economic competitiveness of American manufacturers. Joining us to talk more about the ban on the sale of gas-powered vehicles is State Senator of the 28th District, Melissa Melendez. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So talk, um, give your reaction to this announcement, to this executive order of the ban on the sale of gas-powered cars in 2035 that the governor went and announced. Well, number one, I think that that's something that should have gone through the legislature, not um, some sort of executive order that the governor issues. So I think he's certainly wrong on that front. But second, you know, this puts a tremendous financial burden on a lot of people. And I don't think he's taking that into account. In one breath, he says, we are not taking your cars away. And in the next breath, he says, we're providing an abundance of options. I don't understand how you can take something away and then say you're providing more options. That doesn't really add up. And I will say it is it is a burden that people do not want to bear. Nobody wants the governor to come after their car. They just, I mean, last time I checked, this was America. and We could choose the cars that we want to drive. And a, a third point I will say is that the governor can't keep the lights on right now in our homes in California. I don't know how he thinks he's going to provide enough like for the 40 million people who live here, the 30 million cars that exist in California to be powered without more rolling blackouts. That's the big question is the infrastructure that's needed for this. I mean, he goes and kind of creates this sweeping um, executive order, but there's a lot that goes into this. It's not just, okay, here, we'll ban the sale of cars. It's charging stations. It's being able to have enough power for these cars, right? That's exactly right. And, you know, the, the Democratic-led legislature passed a bill that said California will be 100 percent renewable energy by the year 2045. Everything, everything would be electric. And I am here to tell you that is never going to happen, not because people don't want it to happen, but because the technology doesn't exist. And imagine the size of the um, the wind farms and the solar farms that would have to be created to power a state of 40 million people. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's not that renewable energy isn't, isn't a good thing in some circumstances, something we could strive to you know fit into our portfolio, but this state is never going to be 100% renewable energy. But Gavin Newsom will not be in office in the year 2045, so he has nothing to lose by going out and making these broad, sweeping statements, patting himself on the back that he did something for the planet. In the meantime, not only is he killing people's wallets, but he's killing their jobs, too. And talk, I mean, what, what's the next step here? What, what happens? What power do you have as a senator? What power do the people have um, if they disagree with this? Well, it's funny you ask that because my colleagues on the assembly side, Assemblyman Kiley and Assemblyman Gallagher, are actually taking the governor to court over all of these executive orders that he's issuing because we believe, and those, they are both attorneys. I'm not an attorney, so I'm staying out of this one. But the executive orders that he is issuing, I think, are far and beyond the scope of his authority, despite the fact that we are in a pandemic. And, you know, we tried to strip the governor of his power to issue these kind of executive orders during this state of emergency 
emergency. I introduced a bill, which was SCR 93, to end the state of emergency and take the governor's powers to do things like this away. And the, and the majority party refused to allow that bill to be even voted on. So the governor has the control at least until January, and he could issue executive orders like this every day until hopefully the courts say, you have to stop doing this. This is beyond your authority. So we are trying, but it's certainly not easy in a state like California. Senator, before we go, I know that you talked, uh, questioned where the focus is, especially when so many of Californians are struggling to make ends meet. Can you talk a little bit about AV5, Prop 22, the struggles that the gig economy is really facing right now? Well, it's interesting that AB5, um, you know, the NAACP came out swinging against AB5. That should tell people something. This is a bill that has destroyed so many people's jobs, and the legislature is refusing, particularly the governor, he's doubling down on it. He's refusing to acknowledge it. In fact, he put $20 million into the budget to enforce it. In the meantime, 25% of the unemployment claims in this nation were filed in California. So it has absolutely hurt people's livelihoods. AB5 is a bill, they just should have never signed it. They should admit they made a mistake, start all over, mm -hmm. because I can't tell you how many emails I get on a weekly basis of people who have lost their job. And I don't know what it's gonna take to get the Democrat controlled legislature to understand that and listen to the pleas of their constituents who need a job. And especially now, I mean, my goodness, we're in the middle of a pandemic or the tail end, hopefully and people can't find work. It's, it's completely unfair. It's unconscionable to do this to Californians. Senator Melendez, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your thoughts. Thanks so much. All right. The late